to return to open session. So moved. Motion made by Dr. Coleman, seconded by Ms. Birch. Any discussion? All in favor to say a motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. All right. We, first of all, want to apologize uh, for being late uh, returning from uh, executive session. So we do ask for your uh, understanding in that. Uh, but we did complete our executive session, so we're, we are glad to have been able to do that as well. But we apologize for keeping you waiting tonight. All right, public comment. I believe we have one public comment so far, so I'm going to read the board chairman's statement uh, for the participation. It says, the public participation section of a school board meeting is designed to hear comments from the public, but is limited to 30 minutes so that normal business can be conducted. During this portion of the meeting, board members will listen to concerns and comments, but will not answer questions or debate issues. Each participant will be limited to five minutes and will refrain from making personal complaints about school personnel or board members. So at this time, we'll have Reverend Scott Adams I invite you to the podium. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Superintendent, members of the board, my name is Scott Adams, and I represent a group of pastors in this county, together with the support of our respective congregation. As a beginning note, I just want to thank each of you for your service to this county, to these schools, and to these children. We do understand the burden of public service, and so we applaud you for taking time out of your schedule to do this. I have a copy of a letter for each of you. and. The purpose of this letter is to present several concerns that we have as a Christian community at large in Chesterfield County. And we would request a response from the Chesterfield County School Board. We ask that your response be in a written form and be submitted back to this group no later than April 8th, 2024. Uh, there's four concerns that are on there. Mr. Chairman, you do have in your letter, you'll have a self-addressed stamped envelope. Uh, for the response and also on the bottom of each of your letters will be my personal cell phone number so if you have a question or need explanation or concern with anything that we're asking uh, please feel free to call us and I would ask you to not see this letter as an attack on the school board that is not our intention it's just a means to open dialogue between the school board and, and us okay so I don't know the proper protocol for handing these out Dr. I will King. get them to you but I do have to ask you to excuse me I have to leave abruptly. My grandson has a wee ball game at 6.30 in Hartsville. So uh, that's very important to me. But once again, thank you guys and appreciate your service. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, Mr. Adams, thank you. And you will hear from us. All right, having no more public comment, let's take a few moments and we'll remain seated for a moment of silence. All right, at this time, we're glad to have with us tonight from CRMS, Brighton Huntley, who is going to come and lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. So we invite you to the podium to do that for us. So if everybody please stand, and we'll say our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with all right, it is certainly good to see a packed house tonight. We appreciate you being here and being a part of uh, the school board meeting. I know we've got several recognitions to make tonight, and so we're certainly excited as a board. Uh, it's always exciting we're able to recognize our students across the district uh, for their accomplishments and achievements. Um, but also we want to recognize our 23-24 teacher induction class. So we're going to ask them if they would please stand at this time. And Ms. Cutchin, if you stand with them, I believe she's with that group. All right, let's give them a hand. I know as a part of, and you guys may be seated. Thank you so much. I know as a part of your induction, you have to endure a board meeting tonight. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you're going to enjoy. 
a board meeting tonight. But we certainly welcome uh, each one of you and welcome you not only to Chesterfield County, but also uh, to your school board meeting here tonight. I also want to welcome our SRO, uh, Mr. Shipman, I believe somewhere in, in the back, back there. All right, so good to have you with us tonight. We certainly welcome you. And it's always good to see our administrators and our principals, uh, certainly see a lot of our students, uh, some area citizens and pastors from the area. We certainly welcome uh, each one of you and thank you for being here. Board members, you have been given uh, the minutes prior to the meeting. Uh, here, no objection to the minutes that you were presented. They'll be deemed approved by consent, and that's unanimous. All right, so let's get to some special recognitions. All right, so tonight we're going to recognize our junior scholars and spelling bee winners. Uh, so Ms. Huff, if you would please uh, come to the podium. Uh, she's going to recognize these students for their excellent achievements. And uh, as she reads the names, uh, each one will come forward and you'll receive your board certificate. Uh, and also stay up front, if you would, for a group photo. Tonight, so good afternoon. Good afternoon. And this afternoon, we are excited to recognize our newly identified South Carolina Junior Scholars. These eighth graders, which there are 14 of them, took the test in the fall in October along with any other eighth grader that wanted to take the college board PSAT NMSQT and all of the ones that we're recognizing here tonight either scored a 550 or higher with their reading or a 530 or higher on the mathematics portion so they were doing very well as their eighth graders so at first we'll have New Heights Middle School Allie Gardner, please come up. Alyssa Jenkins from Chesterfield Ruby Middle School. Mia Bautista. Trey Brock. Jamison Dalton, Layla Gaskins, Brighton Huntley. Elijah Morton, Reagan Rivers, Katia Turdo, from Long Middle School we have Robert Dean Ashburn, and David Heitzman. From Long, uh, from Macby High School, McKinley Brigman and Kimber Crowley. Let's give these a round of applause.
we have another recognition for our district spelling bee. On January 23rd, we had the district spelling bee right here with all 11 uh, schools that participated, had us one student per each. And after 10 rounds and 43 words, our runner-up was from Edwards Elementary School, Miss Brooklyn Funderburk. Please come up. And our winner, Mr. Gus Snipes from Macby High School. Board, we certainly want to uh, congratulate all these students. Um, you are the cream of the crop, and we certainly appreciate all of your efforts uh, in, in your academic process. Uh, tonight, we're also going to recognize two FFA students uh, who are also receiving national recognition. So at this time, Dr. Hale will join me at the podium uh, as we talk about their excellent achievements. All right, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Anderson. I have two female agriculture students that I'd like to tell you about tonight. Ms. Reagan Griggs, will you please come forward? <clears throat> As she's coming, <coughs> excuse me, um, Ms. Griggs is a talented junior at MACB High School. She won the National Agriculture Communications Award competition during the National Young Farmer Education Association. The competition was held at Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas during the NYFEA National Institute. The highly competitive contest, which centered on agricultural advocacy, required contestants to showcase their passion for the agricultural industry through various mediums, including writing a compelling press release. She highlighted the National Institute engaging in social media advocacy and participating in an interview focusing on the next generation of agriculturalists. Reagan won the honor of representing the NYFEA and the South Carolina Farmer and Agribusiness Association as an advocate for agriculture during the Agriculture Promise held in Washington, D.C. just last week, which was an all expense paid trip for Reagan. So the Agriculture Promise is a conference designed for young people to advocate for the industry to legislators on Capitol Hill. So please join me in congratulating Ms. Reagan Griggs. Okay. So now, Ms. Lindsay Morris, will you please join us at the podium? You want to do, you want to do those separately? Go ahead, you can go ahead. Yeah. All right, Miss Lindsay. So I'm also thrilled to share the outstanding achievement of Miss Lindsay Morris, a senior at Macby High School. By the way, those instructors are here tonight, I believe. Mr. Sanderson and Mr. Teal in the very back. So she is a senior at Macby High, as I said. She was selected to represent the South Carolina FFA in the National FFA Talent Competition. Subsequently, Lindsay was honored as one of the 50 students nationwide selected by the National FFA as a National Talent Qualifier. According to Mr. Till, this, fi this fine group was selected through numerous qualifying performances the competition was held at the 96th Annual National FFA Convention in Indianapolis this past October 30th through November 3rd. Lindsay showcased her exceptional talent by singing at four different venues during the convention, which drew a remarkable attendance of over 72,000 people. 
Okay. So her remarkable performance not only brought pride to our local FFA MACB chapter, but also showcased the talent and dedication of our students on a national stage. We, we extend our congratulations to Lindsay for these remarkable, remarkable accomplishments and to the Ag Department at MACB High School. Okay. tried our best to get her to go ahead and sing for us tonight. <laughs> but we're going to take about a three-minute recess because I know we have a lot of students here to have a lot of traveling to do. So the board will take about a three-minute recess uh, before we continue on um, with the finance report. We'll call on our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Kasky, for our financial report. Chairman, Dr. Anderson, members of the board, good evening. Good evening. Uh, prior to this evening, you all received a copy of the January financial review. Are there any questions related to the January review? Any board members have questions on the January review? Okay, no questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, at this time we'll call on Dr. Hazard for our personnel report. Dr. Anderson, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. At this time, I would like to recommend the following exhibits for your approval, exhibits A through I. Okay, we're gonna entertain a motion for A through I. Motion made by Dr. Chapman, properly seconded by Mr. Till. Any discussion? All in favor to say a motion, let normal say an aye. aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. At this time, I would like to recommend Exhibit J for your approval. All right, I, mo I need a motion for Exhibit J. I move that we approve Exhibit J. Motion made by Mr. Sweeney. Is there a second? 
second has been made by Dr. Chapman. Any discussion? All in favor of the same motion, let me say aye. All opposed, nay. 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 Call for a division of the house. Okay. So at this time, I tell you what we'll do. Um, all in favor of the said motion, raise your right hand. Well, no, we're going to need to do it because we've got somebody online. My bad. Okay. So we'll do a uh, roll call because our secretary is actually on. All right. Mr. Sams? Yeah. Mr. Dot Chapman? Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Nate Burt? Yeah. Coleman? Yay for Coleman. Yay for Sweeney. Mr. Till? Nay. Nay for Till. Mr. Dusa? <laughs> Mr. Dusa, did you hear exhibit J? <clears throat> uh, please restate. Uh, we're, we're doing a, a poll for uh, a, a Roll call for exhibit, uh, personal exhibit J, A through I was approved unanimously, and we're at J. And so far as the division of the house, and so we have, we need a yay or nay from you. Nay for me. Nay. Okay. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. We got it. Thank you. You. Okay, so the nays have it. Okay, we're going to B, please. Sure, yes, sir. At this time, I would also like to recommend the following board policies for a second reading and approval. Policy JIAA, sexual harassment and retaliation students. Okay, this is second reading, so we entertain a motion. That's a move. Second. Mr. Sweeney has made the motion. Dr. Chapman has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of said motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay. It's unanimous. GBEBE, -E, Gavin's Law, Sexual Extortion, Staff. Okay, this is a second reading. We entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Dr. Coleman and Mr. Sweeney. Any discussion? All in favor of said motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. And it's unanimous. J-I-C-F-B, Gavin's Law, Sexual Extortion Students. Okay, so for second reading, you need a motion? Move. Second. Mr. Sweeney has made the motion. Ms. Birch has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say a motion. I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. nay. And it is unanimous. Go ahead. G-B-A-A, -A, Sexual Discrimination and Harassment Staff. Okay, these are revision policies for second reading. I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Sweeney has made the motion. Mr. Teal has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All aye. opposed, nay. And it's unanimous. And J.I., Student Rights and Responsibilities. Okay. Second. Mr. Sweeney, Ms. Birch. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. nay. And it is unanimous. Mr. Chairman and Board. If it's okay with yeah, you all, please. I would love to introduce our new administrators that Great. are here tonight. Okay? Thank you. So first, I would like to call up Mr. Kevin Mabe and his family. Mr. Mabe is our new principal for New Heights Middle School, starting with the 24-25 school year. And with him today, y'all can come on up. He brought his family. <laughs> his wife, Ellen, his son, Will, and special friend, Kelly. Is that correct? All right. Well, this is the board, and these are the people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, Mr. Mabe, we're excited to have you on board with us, as well as your wife. I believe you're going to be teaching with us as well. Uh, so great. both of you guys were approved. Uh, so we're excited to have you on board with us, and um, welcome to Chesterfield County. I know, right? <laughs> That's why I want to clarify that. <laughs> we got you, Mr. Mate. We got you. <laughs> Next, we have um, Ms. Catherine Rooney. Come on down, please. Ms. Rooney will be taking over from Ms. Beth Huff as coordinator of testing and accountability for the district. Welcome again, Ms. Rooney. She was sweating on Jay as well. <laughs> 
All right, we certainly welcome you to you the testing coordinator uh, position, so we're excited to have you on board. I think you've been with us before, and they come back to Shusville County, so we certainly welcome you on behalf of the board. Next, we have Mr. Jason Evans and his wife, Erin. Mr. Evans will take over as the director of procurement. Come on down, Mr. Evans. Mr. Mayor, we welcome you to the meeting tonight. I was really worried about uh, Mr. Mayor, good to have you. We're excited to have you on board uh, as well. We know you've done this work uh, in previous districts, and so we're excited to have you on board doing it with us. Thank you. And um, we have a new director of grounds and maintenance, Mr. Burr. He was unable to attend tonight, but um, we want to welcome him too, just in case he's watching. That's right. All right. <laughs> we welcome you, Mr. Burr, as well. That's they got you. Have. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Hazard. You're welcome. Thank you all. Okay, at this time we'll call on Ms. Stubbs for our curriculum report, our Chief Academic Officer. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Anderson, and members of the board. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Um, several things I would like to highlight from the curriculum report. Um, the first is um, the, the section on testing and accountability. Um, as we come to the spring season, we know there's lots of assessments um, that students will be undergoing. Um, just want to kind of remind you that our 11th graders um, will be taking um, ACT, SAT, and WIN career readiness. Um, and the WIN is that, that career test to, um, to uh, test children on their students on their um, soft skills, math and reading, and those applications for careers. The SAT and ACT assessments are optional for those students. Um, the end of course exams are coming up for our um, high schools for Biology 1, English 2, U.S. History, um, and Algebra 1. And those are coming up and the dates are listed there. Um, want to <coughs> recognize Mr. James J.W. White, a custodian at Edwards Elementary. He was, this was just a, an awesome uh, thing that happened. Um, he was recognized as the rock star custodian. The Academy of Cleaning Ex Excellence recognized Mr. White on February 26th of 2024 as the National Rock Star Custodian. He was nominated by Mrs. Miles, his principal, as having the nine professional traits outlined in the Rock, rock, star, rock star Custodian Program. Um, and that award acknowledged Mr. White for his ongoing devotion to keep Edwards Elementary safe and healthy um, during his career. So that was just a, a great recognition for the district. Our elementary schools um, had intercession and we called that Winterfest. Um, and that was the, the, the last week um, in fe February. Approximately 124 of our elementary students participated in the program and they worked on math and reading and test preparation. Um, on the second page for our secondary schools, um, got a chart there showing you the number of students that participated in intercession at our elementary schools and also um, during intercession high schools. Um, open the doors for seat time recovery or attendance recovery, and the, the numbers are listed there as well. So um, could be different students on different days, depending on when the students came. Um, but breakfast and lunch were served for all of those students. Um, as far as technology, just wanted to kind of let everybody know that students will be receiving a new Chromebook during the 24-25 school year and the refresh will replace the current model to provide updated technology to our students. The last thing I want to kind of mention is that um, we had to go through a um, curriculum review for our new ELA curriculum for 5K through grade 12. Um, we had a very good representation at the curriculum caravan um, lots of our teachers and administrators were there to review the curriculums, and after very careful review, 
um, schools decided on the best option um, for the upcoming school year. And so um, the following were the votes, the elementary schools and middle schools um, voted for Houghton Mifflin. Sometimes we call that HMH. And at the middle uh, elementary school, it's into reading. And at middle school, it is into literature. And then all of our high schools voted for McGraw-Hill, South Carolina Study Sync curriculum. Any questions? questions? Ms. Sweeney? Yes, sir. Uh, well, let's go back to testing and accountability. Okay. Help me out with some of these acronyms. Uh, NWEA Map Growth and High Readiness Formative Assessment. Give me a small explanation okay. on that. I know things are changing every day, so I want to try to keep up with it. And there are a lot of acronyms in education. You're, you're exactly right. So. Um, our, our MAP is the measure of academic progress, and that is the, the formative assessment that we use um, to kind of let us know along the way where students are in math and reading. Um, and, and that's administered three times a year. Um, and then the iReady is another formative assessment, and we had two of our schools, Edwards Elementary and Petersburg Primary, to, that wanted to look at iReady as a possible formative assessment. Um, and so we kind of gave them, the, they were given the opportunity to pilot um, that formative assessment and we wanted to get feedback from teachers and administrators and, um, and that's where we are in that process, getting their feedback and um, looking at that as a possible formative assessment for our district. And what do you mean by alternative reading, math, and science? I don't want it to be like the alternative facts that they used to talk about. All right, so that would be um, that would be those assessments that are giving to our students with um, uh, cognitive disabilities that that may need an alternative assessment. <coughs> Virtual school. You gave a breakdown of of the students. Do you have that by gender? <coughs> uh, let me see. And thank you for breaking it down for us. Yes, uh, by gender. Um, okay, so I've got, I'm going to have to do some math up here in my head. And I don't know that I can do that with me, everybody watching. Yeah, um, um, so I'm not a math person now. No. Um, so it looks like, let's see, 30, 30, 60, 60, 60. Kevin should be able to add them for you. Correct. See, I'll right there. So it looks like, actually, it looks like we have more females, uh, Mr. Sweeney. It looks like we got, um, let's see, that would be 30, 60, 62% females, and then the other 38% males. You did good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions on the curriculum report? Okay. Something along the line, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, go ahead. I, I, it might be coming up in the future, but I would like to see the discipline report by school. Uh, how are we doing in that area? It's coming up. Okay. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Okay, you can go to B. You're going to recommend the curriculum? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Those numbers got you off, I know. Because she's on her game every time. <laughs> uh, so um, based, on, based on the votes from the schools, um, we would like your approval for the new ELA curriculum for the next school year. Um, that would be the Houghton Mifflin into reading for elementary, Houghton Mifflin into literature for middle school, and McGraw Hill Study Sync for high school. Okay, so we'll entertain a motion before we have discussion. Absolutely. Mr. Sweeney has made the motion. Mr. Sims has seconded. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let me say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. All right, thank, all right, thank you. you so much. All right, at this time we're going to turn our meeting over to our superintendent, Dr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, we're going to prepare for a salary salary study. Our salary study has been completed. You know, it's been several months, um, but it does take a long time for 
for accuracy sake and to do all the research. But nonetheless, though, our salary study that uh, you requested um, has been completed. We're excited about uh, the completion of that report. Also, uh, this is perfect timing because over the next few months, uh, you're going to actually hear the phrase creating a pathway forward, creating a pathway forward. And that's actually a document that uh, we're going to be developing that outlines uh, that, should, that would include uh, goals, objectives, actions, pretty much a, a strategic plan, if you will, for the next three to five years for our district, because we want to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. So um, that's coming uh, very soon in the next few months. Perfect timing to get this uh, salary study completed. For that reason, the second reason, obviously, is because we're in budget season and the data that we will that's, uh, we'll be able to pull from this salary study will, will be a great benefit to us. So with that being said, um, we're very thankful for the Student Centered Education Consulting Group, uh, specifically Mr. Gerald Moore, who conducted this uh, salary study, also with the assistance of Dr. Hazard, our CFO, our uh, Chief of HR, and Mr. Kasky, our CFO. So he's on. Uh, he will. He'll be presenting virtually. Uh, and at this time, I'm turning over to Mr. Moore. If you can hear me. Thank you, Dr. Anderson, and Chairman Vic. I greatly appreciate the opportunity and honor to uh, make this report to the uh, Chesterfield County School Board. I do want to say one thing. I'm very impressed with the junior scholars, and. Uh, your spelling bee and FFA. I congratulate the board on taking time to recognize those students for their hard work. What we want to do today is take a look at the salary study that uh, uh, we conducted. And this thing has been going on since September. And I'll tell you a little bit about how we work on to get the study and then some recommendations. I will tell you that you are in very good shape as far as your salary. So I have very few recommendations uh, for a study that was this extensive. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. Can you see my uh, slides? Uh, looking at the salary study, the districts that participated were Chesterfield, Darlington, Florence 1, Florence 2, Florence 3, Florence 5, Kershaw, Lancaster, and Marlboro. We wanted to have local districts in the study. Dr. Anderson emphasized that, uh, especially uh, some districts that uh, will get to competing for your people. And we want to make sure that we are competitive with the other districts. Uh, and I will just tell you, other districts will not hesitate to uh, take your people. And I worked in one district, I won't say where, they took four teachers from that district in one day uh, for another district. What we did was we only compare salary scales. We try to match those to the districts and the other study as closely as possible. These things, every district does it almost a different way. For instance, when we got to secretaries, we had almost 130 different salary scales that we were trying to match and put into positions. We look at the scales, we average them, we compare them to the average of the districts in the study. And then we look at, and it's very straightforward. If the position is below the 90% average of the study district, we recommend that the district raise the scale or take a look at it anyway and consider it. Teacher salaries are reported on a yearly basis. And I will tell you this, your, your teacher salaries are running 92, 93% of the other districts. We look at your salaried positions like your assistant superintendents, your chiefs and directors on a daily basis and hourly positions on an hourly basis. And the reason we have to look at the salary positions on a daily basis is there's so much variations in contracts the contracts uh, for a 12 month contract across the districts in this study ran from 230 days to 260 days. And 
the best way to compare it is looking at it on a per day basis. We also added something this year that we haven't done before another salary study. We look at the functions and by functions, I mean, finance, instruction, human relations, uh, about seven or eight different functions and pulled data from those and calculated the function as well. We found some interesting things there, but findings are then reported, the calculations graphed, and the recommendations are made. Uh, the graphic and everything else uh, with this runs into hundreds of pages. Let's get to some recommendations. The finance uh, chief finance officer, chief human resources officer, uh, we're at 84 and 89 percent. We recommend uh, that they raise the scales. Uh, for these. Uh, again, that's this is a local decision, but this is just on our recommendation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm like Fox News. I report, you decide. We recommend that the de district uh, better uh, define the roles of coordinators. Uh, I found that coordinators, not, uh, not so much for Chesterfield, but all over the place doing all different things. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's where the, how the coordinators fit in to the organizational chart and, and what they do, because uh, some of these jobs that uh, coordinators are doing are not coordinator jobs. We recommended the district look at the functions of psychology. You pay your psychologists very well, but you have them, uh, you probably need to expand their functions and uh, take a look at the length of their contract. I think they're 100. 80, 190 days uh, contracts, so uh, maybe even, uh, and you probably won't take a look at that. We rec recommend that the district consider creating a specialist position across functions. By specialists, I mean this, I'm a uh, retired Air Force Reserve, and I'm used to dealing with those kinds of things. A specialist to me is your super sergeants. They're the people that are experts in one or two areas and are just hands down, know the job up one side and down the other. And they're really above the position of clerk or uh, an administrative assistant. And some of these people are in positions that if they didn't come to work tomorrow, nobody would get paid or other bad things could happen. But there's, it's a very specialized thing we recommend that you, you might want to look at having a position for them or all across the functions. We examine, recommend you examine the structure of the technology. The technology department is very good, but it needs to be restructured, probably uh, adding some additional people to help uh, with technology. We recommend raising bus driver scales. Now this is one that you're definitely not competitive with your other districts. And believe you me, all uh, the other districts and some of these districts in this study will take their bus drivers. We recommend raising the salary for the transportation coordinator. And we're saying the district probably needs to look at that position and uh, as to where it's function or level. We see that thing all the way up, uh, that particular position, all the way up to an assistant superintendent in some district and uh, all the way down to a, a, a you know, just above a clerk in the other districts. We recommend the addition of a head custodian position at each school. Uh, and just uh, someone that can coordinate and be responsible to the principal and to district uh, for the operation and scheduling of the custodians in the bill. We recommend that you increase your salaries for student nutrition, food service. They're not competitive with the other districts and uh, they need to be uh, adjusted. You might want to consider, and we put a recommendation in there, but that, again, that's a consideration. Looking at your school managers on the basis of school size or the number of meals served daily. We recommend that the maintenance scales be reworked. I had a real hard time with maintenance scales. Uh, uh, some of your scales have different steps to them, and by steps, I mean uh, in teachers, it actually looks like a yearly, yearly thing. The steps are not necessarily a yearly increase, but some of the some of the scales had 18 steps, some had 20 steps, 
and then some of the scales that probably should have been the, the top level scale, like a, a, a Tech One, was actually making uh, making less than some, or making more than a Tech Two and some of the others. So that needs to be cleaned up. And uh, you have ten scales, and we'd recommend you probably go back to uh, uh, scales based on the level of uh, uh, the skill of a person uh, to be considered. Executive assistance to the superintendent, your your superintendent secretary, district office administrative staff assistance needs to be raised. In a lot of districts, we're seeing now that the executive assistant of the superintendent and the board is actually being put on salary. It is a demanding job that uh, uh, requires a lot more uh, work and probably something you, you maybe ought to consider. But those are the main recommendations in the in the in the job areas. Now, looking at supplements, and we took a look at the athletic supplements too. And uh, in doing this, I think I found out there were about oh six hundred and something ways to say coach. But uh, <laughs> and looking at these and comparing them to the other districts, as far as department heads, yearbook sponsors, and class sponsors on the academic side, we recommend an increase. Now, supplements are an area that uh, uh, you don't need a lot of money uh, and it won't cost you a lot uh, to get them competitive. We have uh, uh, athletic support trainer. There's no trainer listed. We made no recommendation there. You might want to con consider that. Uh, I didn't see it in the scale. And again, I take the scales that are sent me and ask a few questions and go from there. Baseball, your middle school head coach, uh, we have no recommendation there, but we do recommend that the baseball and softball coach, coaches uh, have an increase. So head coach, assistant coach, and varsity head coach, the increase. Basketball, the same thing. Uh, we recommend an increase for basketball uh, coaches. Your sideline cheerleaders, and by cheerleader sidelines, I mean spirit cheers, cheerleaders that aren't competition cheerleaders. And you actually have both a spring squad and a fall squad, but what districts now do is they pay the same thing for the spring and the fall squads. And we recommend an increase for your sideline cheerleaders. We also recommend an uh, increase for your varsity competition, both at the uh, high school and at the middle school. Cross country, we have no recommendation. Football, we have no recommendations. You're paying your coaches, uh, football coaches very well and, and are competitive. The only football coach we recommend an increase for would be uh, the uh, middle school. Uh, I'm having a hard time seeing the golf at the bottom of the page there. Uh, sorry. Soccer varsity, no recommendation. Strength coach, we recommend, recommend uh, a strength coach and program. You have you have a weightlifting program. You might want to consider, uh, you know, with your athletics, putting in a, a strength program. Tennis, we recommend an increase. Varsity head coaches in track, we recommend an increase. Volleyball head coach, we recommend an increase. We do not recommend one for the junior varsity head coach but we do want for the middle school. Wrestling, we recommend an increase for the junior varsity head coach uh, and uh, for the middle school uh, coach as well. Band director, we recommend an increase there. An assistant director and color guard also uh, are not, uh, uh, not meeting the 90% threshold for the other district. Chorus, there's no recommendation there. But that's the, the quick of uh, what we found. And uh, there's a lot more details and a lot more stuff in there. But uh, and we could go on for hours on this stuff. But uh, uh, but those are the recommendations that we have uh, for your consideration. Again, you're in great shape. And, uh, you know, it, it's not going to take a lot of money uh, to make uh, to make these changes. Mr. Chairman, Dr. Anderson, uh, that's my report.
questions? All right, we may have a couple questions. Mr. Moore, are, are you able to take questions? Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll go with Mr. Sweeney. Uh, on your recommendations for increases, um, where did Chesterfield County uh, fall on this chart when you compare it with the other schools that you uh, were using in this study? Uh, are we on a lower half or what? A middle? No, sir. You're, you had you only had one or two positions that were even in the 70%. Your, your, the ones that I recommended on are in the uh, 80s, 85% percent things you're you're not far off no sir you're not you're not in bad shape at all okay thank you okay we have we have another question uh dr coleman yes with your bus driver pay how far off are we with the uh compared to sellers with bus drivers uh hang on just a minute i've got that up here i can i can tell you um you can give me just a second this computer went to sleep Bus drivers is an area of concern of every district with whom we have worked. Uh, and hang on just a second. Bus drivers, here we go. Your bus drivers, uh, district average is $15.86. Now, you bear in mind, this is the average of the scale. And then the study average is $19.23. You're 82% uh, of the uh, the study average. But, you know, you, your bus drivers ne definitely need a raise. Okay. And and board members, you will get a packet that's, okay. that's more thorough right. uh, as far as numbers that's and those right. type things as well. Yes, they will. Any other questions for Mr. Moore? All right, we certainly appreciate all your work on it, uh, and we thank you for doing the study for us, and we look forward to looking at the individual numbers that you have presented to us as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been a pleasure, and I wish you good luck. Chest right, Chesterfield thanks, sir. County thank you. is a very special place, and I can I, I can see that when, when you look at the districts around you, uh, you just stand out among the other districts. I mean, it's just a, a, a very special place, and that's due to the leadership of the superintendent and the board and the teachers and everybody in the community that's down there. And uh, uh, it's been a pleasure working. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. You know, I was obviously it's March. I'm a basketball guy, March Madness. And I, I heard a coach the other day that said, she said that good teams will make it to the first round but only talent will take you beyond the first round you will not advance without talent she, she said a mouthful there because it takes talent to recruit we need to recruit talent and we need to retain talent in it cost because we have to have the right employees not just teachers, employees who touch our children every single day. We have to have quality people, good people with talent, encountering and educating our students every day. Great salary study. It's very detailed. It was extremely exhaustive, and that's what we need. So again, as we push forward trying to uh, the, the establish the pathway for the next three to five years in our school district this is what we need you know we we don't I don't want us to be in position you know things are good but see three to five years I don't want to I we can't lose people to our neighboring districts we just can't do it okay um, our students deserve the best and and I know that we're gonna do whatever we need to do to Keep, keep the best that we have, recruit and retain. So it's not just teachers, all employees. Um, so again, we'll get the, the, the big report to you all, okay? Um, and uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us, myself, Dr. Hazard, or Mr. Caskey, okay?
All right, Mr. Chairman, the school 24-25 school calendar. So at the last meeting. Okay, so we can, you, you guys have been given the uh, calendar prior to the meeting, prior to the last meeting. So um, I guess before we do any discussion, we can entertain a motion. It was tabled last time, so we can entertain a motion on one of the calendars and, and then have discussion. I'll make a motion. We'll go with option one, sir. Motion has been made by Mr. Teal, seconded by Ms. Birch. All right, any discussion? Okay, all in favor of the said motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Hold up now, I gotta get the papers back together. All right. Uh, revision of policy, board policy G J E, recommend for second reading and approval. Okay, board members, you've been given policy on J E, uh, so this will be the second reading. So I entertain a motion. Okay. Birch has made the motion. Mr. Sweeney has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of say a motion. Let me know. Saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. And it is unanimous. All right. Upcoming events. Um, definitely want to. Announce that we on March 18th is the end of the nine weeks. It will be the fourth quarter. Uh, excited about that. March 26th, report cards will be distributed. On March 27th, we will be having um, our employee bre uh, appreciation breakfast for the second semester. And we certainly invite each one of you uh, to that breakfast. We will be appreciating our IT employees. And then April 1st through the 5th, we will have spring break. Also want to um, mention the arts festival that we had, showcase that we had on last Thursday. I think it was last Thursday at Sherrall High School. Wonderful event, gym was packed. The arts, uh, artwork that we saw was just absolutely amazing. And of course the music, the band, the chorus, they were absolutely amazing. So wonderful job to our performing arts um, uh, staff, everyone involved, and of course to our parents and our students, we appreciate them. Also want to just acknowledge that we have with our district leadership team. Our district leadership team um, was selected to um, present at this year's state conference, I3 conference, SCASA uh, conference, and they're going to be presenting on how the district staff supports school principals, which is wonderful. Um, they're representing Chesterfield County. You know, we it matters, right? So they'll be representing and, and presenting on the state level, along with, I don't, I don't see him in the audience, but Mr. Charles Redfern, principal at Jefferson Elementary School, he will be presenting as well, uh, and I think the name of his presentation is uh, my first year as principal. Now what? Now what? And, you, and if you if you know Mr. Redfern, that sounds just like him. Yeah. Okay, but very proud of the uh, leadership team. Very proud of Mr. Redfern. And that's but that's what we do. We represent our school district at the state and national levels. Uh, expect more because that's that's what we're about. Okay. All right. That concludes all of my remarks, Mr. Chairman. I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. And I don't believe we've had this many approvals in one night. Probably the whole year. So. Or all of last year, I believe. All right, so board members, um, you've been notified about the easement request from Duke Energy uh, Progress um, at Long Middle School. Uh, so I need to entertain a motion uh, to give them that easement. Mr. Sweeney has made the motion. Ms. Birch has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of said discussion, let me know. By the motion, let me know. I'm saying aye. Aye. And nay. It is unanimous. All right. Let's see. Also, board members, you've been given a property sale recommendation uh, to Sand Hill Telephone uh, Company that's also up near um, Petersburg. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion for it. Mr. Chairman, I move that we authorize the administration to move forward with the sale of the property near Petersburg Elementary in the amount of $16,000. Second, I move. Motion was made by Dr. Coleman, seconded by Mr. Sweeney. Any just questions? All in favor to say a motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. 
All right, board members, I want to remind you, March the 30th is your deadline to submit the uh, Statement of Economic Interest, which I still have to do, so I better go home and do that tonight. They will fine you about $100 a day for every day that you are late, so be sure and do that. And they will. I've been there. Uh, April the 10th is the SESBA Day at the Capitol, so board members, mark your calendar for it. I uh, also want to take just a few moments and uh, recognize Dr. Anderson. Uh, he presented at the Hilton Head Conference, and a lot of us were able to go to it. Uh, and he did uh, a fantastic job, and he represented Chesterfield County well uh, in Hilton Head. So we certainly thank you for that, Dr. Anderson. All right, board members also will call your attention into the public as well. Our next board meeting will be April the 15th. We've moved that meeting down one because of spring break being the week prior to our meeting uh, to give the district office time to uh, get the information together for us. So that board meeting will be here at the Pamela Learning Center, uh, executive session at 5 and um, meeting at 530. All right, at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Right, motion has been made by Mr. Teal, seconded by Dr. Coleman. All in favor of said motion, let me all say an aye. aye. All opposed, nay, and it is unanimous. Thank you so much. We appreciate your attendance tonight. <laughs>